Hello everyone, Todd Lambert here, Regional and DoD Trainer for MERS Reporting. In this tutorial, we're going to look at our security roles and permissions. Our goal is to help you and your department get started off on the right foot with the most trusted records management system for fire and EMS agencies. I'm going to show you how to create three different types of roles. I'll explain how granularity works. And lastly, I'll show you how to move personnel from one role to another. Let's get started. First, we will navigate to the Administration module. Next, we will click on the Security Roles and Permissions. Here you see we have an Administrator role. This is how all accounts are set up when they are brand new. We are now going to start creating our roles for our personnel. We'll just click on the Add Role button. There are three types of roles you might create. The first is what I call Rank or Position Based. We all have firefighters, so we will start with creating a role for our rank and file firefighters. When you click on the Create Role Based on Existing button, you will see that we have built four templates for you to use, as well as any roles you create will also become templates for you to create roles from. So for this role, we will use the firefighter template. Now as you know, whenever you see red asterisks, red text, or generally the color red in the system, it indicates a required field or that something needs to be done, something needs to be completed. So here we need a name for our role. This one is easy. We'll just call it Firefighter. Now the description isn't required, but it does help us identify what this role was created for. I'm a little OCD, so I'm going to remove the word template here. Okay, now clicking on the Permissions button will take us to where we can set the level of access our personnel with the rank of Firefighter will have. Here you can see some of our modules have granular access and some don't. The way you can tell is to look at the number of items listed to the right of the module name. If it reads zero items, then the module doesn't have granularity yet, and the access is straightforward. It's either no access, read only, or full access. If we look at a module and it shows to have a number greater than zero, then it is granular, and we will want to expand it and set the granular access we want our firefighters to have. One we might set for our firefighter is the daybook access. This will allow them to make daily log entries. When looking at our granular permissions, we call it a subtractive system, meaning in order to give access to a module, we first must give full access and then we subtract the access we don't want them to have. When setting access for our firefighters in the daily log, the key word to look at is the word all. We don't want our firefighters to be able to delete all daily log entries or even to modify all daily log entries. So we just subtract those two levels of access and that leaves our firefighters with the ability to make, modify, and delete my, meaning their own entries. This is even limited because these entries have a 48 hour time limit on them, meaning after 48 hours, even their own entries are locked to them and cannot be modified or deleted by them. Someone with full access, however, can make modifications or deletions at any time. So that should explain granularity in the subtractive system. You would now just look at each module and set the access levels you want all of your rank and file firefighters to have. I'm going to click the Add Role button at the bottom, and we will then talk about our second type of role you might want or need to create. The second role you might need to create is what I call a responsibility-based role. This is a role that could be for someone outside of your organization who has a responsibility that could affect the fire department. One that comes to mind might be your local water department. Some call it the Department of Public Works. They generally have the responsibility of repairing and maintenance of hydrants that the fire department uses. Most fire departments do the annual flow testing. So this is an area of the system where giving access to an outside agency could be beneficial to both parties. Sharing of data that could benefit both organizations is a win-win in my book. So we're going to create a role called Hydrants Only. We don't need to use a template for this role, but I will add a description and call it the Role for the Water Department. Next, clicking on the Permissions button, you will see everything is set to No Access. We will then just need to make changes to the Hydrants module. We will set it to full access and can subtract anything we don't want the Water Department to have if we need to. Then, 
In the reports module, we will again set it to full access, but here we will set all the areas of the system for reports to no access except for the hydrants module by subtracting each module. Now we can click the add role button at the bottom and we have created our second type of role. I'm sure you can think of other responsibility based roles you might need that can all be set up the same way. The third type of role you might need to create is a combination of the other two roles. It's a role based on a position or rank within the department that also has an additional responsibility over and above that of a rank and file member. An example of this might be a firefighter who is also your SCBA technician. As an SCBA tech, this firefighter will need more access to the maintenance module than all the other firefighters. The reason for this role is mainly because a person can only be assigned to one role at a time. So a member who has both a rank and position based requirement for access and additional duties or responsibilities will need a role that covers both. So again, we will click the add role button. This time we will cr click the create role based on existing button and we will use the firefighter role we already created, not the template because we want the role to have the same capabilities as all the other firefighters and we have made changes to the role that are different from the template. Again, having to create a name, we'll call this one firefighter slash SCBA tech and edit the description to reflect what the role is intended for. Again, clicking on the permissions button, we will now look at the maintenance module. You'll see that because we didn't change any of the access levels for our rank and file firefighters, they don't have access to make any changes in the maintenance module. Our SCBA tech will need more access than that to be able to track the repairs and testing that they do with the SCBAs. So we will give them access to assign and schedule maintenance, complete maintenance, request maintenance, view archived and view maintenance history, and then click the add role button at the bottom. We now have three different roles created. You should understand the process now. You should also have a good understanding of how the granularity and the subtractive system of the roles and permissions works. With that you should have a really good idea of how to create the roles you will need for your organization. The last couple of things we will look at here is the options we have for each role here on the right. The three icons will give you the capabilities to add a person or multiple people to a role, edit the role's access, or delete the role if no one is added to the role. Any role that has someone added to it cannot be deleted until they have been reassigned to another role. The last two icons are pretty straightforward, but the people icon has some pretty cool features. Let's take a look at them. Clicking on the people icon for the firefighter comes up with the add remove personnel from the role you are editing. Here we can see who already has this role and who is available to assign to this role. We can filter out our people list below by typing in a name or selecting a rank or looking for a specific role they are already assigned to. By clicking on the blue plus sign, we can add personnel one at a time, and if we make a mistake, we can click on the orange minus sign to remove them. If we want to move a group all at once, we can click on the little box in the left corner of the Available Personnel section and perform a bulk operation by clicking the Add to Roll button. Once we have done what we need to do, you just click the Save button and you're done. That's it. Roles and Permissions is an easy way to set the different levels of access you will want your personnel to have in the system and gives you an easy way to manage them all in one place. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching. Have a great day everybody and stay safe out there.